Welcome to the American Medical Certification Association, working together to develop quality allied healthcare professionals. AMCA continues to provide free study material and practice tests, free job placement assistance, free instructor testing, along with comprehensive reporting and our top quality customer service. The AMCA has 11 certification exams, five NCCA credit exams, and three career advancement programs. Choose the AMCA for your national certification needs. CIW is a leading provider of information technology skills to students and professionals around the world. CIW is recognized in more than 90 countries as an industry standard in IT education and certification by academic institutions, governments, businesses and professionals alike. As a global leader in IT education, CIW has educated more than 1 million students and awarded more than 160,000 professional certifications throughout thousands of high schools, colleges, universities and learning centers worldwide. We prepare students for careers in web development, web design, network and database administration, cybersecurity, applications development, software development, digital marketing, graphic design, and video animation. CIW, where technology careers are built. F.A. Davis is an independent, family-owned publisher of educational solutions for the nursing and health science professions. We're dedicated to listening to our customers and to developing innovative products empowered by the technology that is changing how students are learning, instructors are teaching, and professionals are practicing. Our entire team is dedicated to meeting your needs in key programs. These programs include medical assisting, phlebotomy, massage therapy, IV therapy, emergency medical services, medical terminology, and anatomy and physiology. We measure our success by your successes. Call on us to learn more and enjoy CETI. Aceware Systems is proud to be a sponsor of the 2021 SETI conference. For over 30 years, we've worked alongside you to provide the tools you need for course management and registration. We understand the unique needs and challenges of non-credit programs. We know you need software as flexible and customizable as the programs you develop for students and industry. Contact us to see Aceware in action. When you're ready for a change in a software partner, we're ready to help you grow your program. Enjoy the conference.
Many have heard the saying, people are your most valuable asset. That is a fact. And HRCP, the leader in human resources preparation, is looking for additional colleges and universities willing to teach HR certification prep courses. This will open up doors to many in your area looking to advance their HR career. The HRCP turnkey course will prepare them to take any HR certification exam. HRCP works with many educational institutions who teach our materials on their campus. We have a shining reputation in the industry that comes from 25 years of innovative exam preparation. Want to partner with us to help prepare students, increase revenue, and fill a need in your area? Simply log on or give us a call today. F.A. Davis is an independent, family-owned publisher of educational solutions for the nursing and health science professions. We are dedicated to listening to our customers and to developing innovative products empowered by the technology that is changing how students are learning, instructors are teaching, and professionals are practicing. Our entire team is dedicated to meeting your needs in key programs. These programs include medical assisting, phlebotomy, massage therapy, IV therapy, emergency medical services, medical terminology, and anatomy and physiology. We measure our success by your successes. Call on us to learn more and enjoy CETI. CIW is a leading provider of information technology skills to students and professionals around the world. CIW is recognized in more than 90 countries as an industry standard in IT education and certification by academic institutions, governments, businesses, and professionals alike. As a global leader in IT education, CIW has educated more than 1 million students and awarded more than 160,000 professional certifications throughout thousands of high schools, colleges, universities, and learning centers worldwide. We prepare students for careers in web development, web design, network and database administration, cybersecurity, applications development, software development, digital marketing, graphic design, and video animation. CIW, where technology careers are built. Welcome to the American Medical Certification Association, working together to develop quality allied healthcare professionals. AMCA continues to provide free study material and practice tests, free job placement assistance, free instructor testing, along with comprehensive reporting and our top quality customer service. The AMCA has 11 certification exams, five NCCA credit exams, and three career advancement programs. 
choose the AMCA for your national certification needs. to be a sponsor of the 2021 SETI conference. For over 30 years, we've worked alongside you to provide the tools you need for course management and registration. We understand the unique needs and challenges of non-credit programs. We know you need software as flexible <clears throat> and customizable as the programs you develop for students and industry. Contact us to see Aceware in action. When you're ready for a change in a software partner, we're ready to help you grow your program. Enjoy the conference. Awesome. Welcome, everyone, and welcome, Sharon. And Sharon, if you want to um, start your slide deck, we will start. Okay, let's take a look here. Are you seeing me yet? I do not see your slide deck, but I see you. All right. I'm looking for the share button here, folks. Okay. Screen. Uh, somebody may have to help me. I don't even see the toolbar anymore. Stephanie, tech support. Um. Can Let's see. Nothing here. When I hover at the um, bottom of my screen, that's mm -hmm. when the buttons show up. Yeah, nada. Okay. Nada. I will get you. I will get you some help because I bet we're not the only people on the earth that ever needs help. So it's <laughs> okay to ask for help. As I said, tech support. Stephanie, are you there? She had warned us, everybody, that when we did kind of the time jump, that this they might disappear. And it looks like mine did. Let's try this. That won't work either. Oh, I heard Lynn say, no, y'all are the only two. Nah, I'm not buying that one. <laughs> are they telling me something there? Let's see here. Um, let's see here. I see my presenter screen, but I am not seeing. Hi, Sharon. Hey. Uh, so when you're looking at your screen at the top of your Zoom uh, program that you're looking at right now, uh, do you see a bar going across the top or do you see um, any zoom icons on the task bar of your computer at the bottom uh, on the task menu? None of the above. Let me look here. I'm going to stop the video for a little bit. Recording on air more. <gasps> wait, wait. I think I may have found the solution. Good deal. Yeah, it should be a should be a bar, and you should see a green button that says share screen. Obviously, we're going to throw you a lifeline. I can pull up the presentation if you like. 
Let's see here. I'm looking at Zoom. I mean, I use Zoom on a daily, daily basis. Are you seeing at least a black screen at this point? The black yeah. screen, yes, ma'am. Okay. How about now? There we go. There we go. Awesome. And thank you, everyone, for your um, patience. Um, we're all we're all doing good, but we still have a, a little bit of a learning curve for all of us. So what I'm going to do is in the chat session to everyone, I am going to paste a link. And this link will help you get the most out of Ms. Sharon's presentation. Download this handout and it will help you if you want to follow along. But um, Sharon, I did download your link. So um, I know that's what you wanted me to do. And, and um, we are still recording, it appears. So we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. It is Thursday afternoon, uh, a lovely day at, in uh, 3.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we want to thank our sponsors. We are on our third day of SETI, Continuing Education Training Institute. We've had a wonderful three days, a lot of great information that's been shared, um, informational information. Um, some has been job related, exam related, some's just been emotional about how do we relate to one, each other and breaking down our barriers of who we are as a person, uh, what barriers are there are for, you know, in our jobs, etc. But without our sponsors, uh, we wouldn't, we would not be able to bring SETI to you at no charge. And I would like to take a moment to thank Core Education, ProTrain. F.A. Davis Company, CompTIA, Aceware Systems, which Sharon's going to um, uh, pre be presenting on behalf of, HRCP, Zenegrade, AMCA, and CIW. So just take a moment to realize that there are sponsors out there that help make events like this at no charge for our attendees. I know there's a lot of conference options out there, and I know um, many cost. And I know that we're getting back in our cars and the airplanes and going to attend these conferences and it costs money. Um, but this year we chose once again to make it virtual at no cost just for everybody's safety and because it's convenient. We've, we've sort of gotten used to working uh, virtually and um, it means you didn't have to get dressed up to come to this event. You didn't have to buy an airline ticket, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But our event is being recorded for your convenience. You will be provided the recording and the links to the PDF. So if by chance you're watching this recording and you weren't able to attend the event, we did this just for you uh, and for others who may want to share it and watch it again. You are automatically muted during this session not because we don't want to hear your voice, it's because we may be working from home and we may have cats and we may have dogs and we may have kids. And we want to make sure that it's convenient and quiet for everybody to be able to listen to. But I assure you, your voice is welcome. So we want to have you uh, make any comment, any question that you want, put it in the Q&A box that's located on the lower navigation bar for all questions and we'll get to all of your questions by the end of the session and give you answers. I would highly encourage and ask you and respectfully ask you to use social media and post the hashtag SETI2022. And more importantly is for, you know, we're all about lifelong learning, continuing ed. Well, the, we have formed the Continuing Education Training Institute, SETI, alumni group on LinkedIn. Uh, there's no advertisements. It's ask questions, share experiences, um, you know, good things, bad things, so we can learn from each other, on, you know, on a national, worldwide basis. But join the SETI alumni group and use it. There's no charge to it. And like I said, there's no advertising. It's there for you to be used by you. So I encourage you to do that. But it is with my esteem pleasure to welcome our presenter, Sharon. Sharon uh, serves as president of Aceware Systems, and I've known Aceware for quite some time. Sharon Brookshire, 
Um, I've, I've seen her for years and years and years. I used to hang out uh, at conferences when I first started pro train uh, with Chuck. Um, Chuck Havlicek and now you know Chuck has entrusted um, Aceware to Sharon and she's a wonderful human being. Uh, they are a company that develops registration software, supports their users. The mission is to help continuing education because I know that Aceware was built by a continuing educator for continuing education, much like ProTrain has been. Uh, helping the workforce industry develop, market, register, manage the administrative functions of all the operations. Uh, Sharon is very well versed in curriculum and instruction. She has a bachelor's of science in education, so she's just like us. We're all come back, we all come from the educational background. Uh, before joining ACEWARE, yet again, she spent 18 years with Kansas State University's division of CE. So she knows it, she does it, she lives it, she breathes it. She held many titles, program coordinator, administrator, and director of the conferences and non-credit programs. Um, so we try to bring real people to this conference that's really involved, whether you're on the certification side or whether you have lived it and breathed it and done it and share your experiences. And I believe that Sharon is one of those people and her favorite title, and I love it, is Mimi to her three-year-old grandson, Elliot. And I know she's really proud of that. So with that, I give you Miss Sharon Brookshire. Thank you, Betty. And thank you, ProTrain, for providing this training institute that's bringing new and experienced continuing education professionals together. It's great to be with colleagues to share success stories gather advice for those common challenges we all have, gain programming ideas, and discuss the current trends. Okay, let's give SETI a round of applause for the, for the event and ProTrain for organizing it. Just, you know, type in that chat area, uh, SETI rocks, so they know that you're appreciating all of the work that you've done. And I want to share that I looked at the participation list and I see representation from the many, many faces of CE. There's colleges and universities and tech schools, adult ed, community ed, workforce development, professional development. Y'all, continuing education and workforce development is the future of higher education. You are part of filling those skills gaps that businesses across the nation are identifying. You're retraining the workforce. You're growing quality employees, meeting real industry needs. And I know that you all work tirelessly with the goal of helping people grow personally and professionally. And I think that is the best feeling ever to help people reach their full potential and succeed. So give yourself a round of applause or a pat on the back, high five a colleague, high five a, a, your pet that's working at home with you, or write, I make a difference in the Q&A or the chat section. For everyone to notice, and I want to share that goals from SETI were for presentation interaction and to design a plan for application. We all know that you learn better by participating and sharing and selfishly as a web speaker, knowing somebody that's out there is great. And so I am going to encourage you in our time together to do some participating. I'm gonna ask you to respond to some questions in the Q&A or in the chat. And we'll also have a few polls, so stay close, everyone. And at the end of our time together today, we're going to talk about your application plan. And hopefully you've copied that URL and pasted that in and printed that kind of planning document in case that helps you organize your thoughts. All right, let's get started. As Betty mentioned, I came from University CE. At Kansas State University, I was part of the CNCP team, the Conferences and Non-Credit Programs team. We ran around 350 programs 
which consisted of conferences and trainings and workshops and online self-paced programs. We did that annually with a team of five program coordinators, three registration specialists, and those all important student assistants. You know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> We had partnerships with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. We had partners with the Department of Agriculture, uh, the Department of Defense, and Register of Deeds Association, and, and others. When beginning my CE career as a coordinator, my assigned mentor gave me her five words of wisdom. And those were, put yourself in their shoes. This is always going to serve you and your customers well, she said. And that's not groundbreaking advice by any means. But it has really and truly served me extremely well, personally and professionally. As a coordinator, I quickly became an expert in providing those after action reports and debriefing with my team. And you see how the Department of Defense influenced me. Those reports were reviewed with clients and on-site logistics team, and they included statistical information, data on our attendees, where did they come from, what led them to register, what was their feedback on the event or the course, and of course, that final financial report to see how we did as compared to what we projected at the beginning. And this experience was on an event by an event or a course by course basis. And it provided guidance for improving the next event or course because we wanted to continue to grow and grow those registrations. Now, as a program administrator, I was responsible for reporting those financials over all programs and events. Had to predict coordination income, uh, registration income, what expenses they were going to be, and that became very familiar territory. When I was appointed director of the unit, Oh, those waters became a little more unfamiliar to me, a little bit choppy, and the stakes were much higher. One of my charges was this unit needs to become completely self-supporting, direct, which was I, I was already covering, and indirect expenses in three years. So there was no pressure there for me at all, huh? And then I experienced what I call the call from the dean's office saying, Sharon, the dean needs this information, insert a bullet point list here, and she needs it in five minutes for her meeting with the provost. Um, I was blindsided. Um, I was accustomed to pre-scheduled meetings and I knew how to prepare. Now, I did have probably close to 90% of that bulleted list, but the 10% that was missing blew me away. Lots of excuses were coming to my mind. I wasn't told, you didn't let me know, but I simply said, this is what I can give you. The rest of it, I can't in that short amount of time period. And folks saying, I can't, her request makes a very service-oriented gal like me feel like a failure. I had let down my team, I had let down my division, I'd let down my unit, I let, uh, yeah, you're right. I had a little pout and a personal pity party, and then I returned to that piece of advice, put yourself in their shoes. My dean wasn't intentionally trying to put me on the spot. She wasn't setting me up to fail. There was nothing sinister about the request. She was simply trying to respond to a request made from her. It wasn't even about me, come to think of it. So I changed my attitude first. 
and I embraced that challenge and called it an opportunity. I reached out to her to request a planning meeting with the topic of help me help you. Let's get together as soon as possible. And that navigation plan, that data planning process is what I'm gonna share with you today. Now, fine print. You heard nothing in my bio about me being a statistician or a data scientist. You don't have to be one either, but I do have a little common sense. I can recognize data patterns and I am a service fanatic. I get the most satisfaction at helping people and colleagues, even difficult administrators with unreasonable requests succeed. And I know we all have that in common. So where are we going? It all starts with your mission. That's where it begins. I think this is the ultimate test of your data quality. Does the information you're collecting and reviewing and evaluating help develop your strategic compass? Are these pieces you're collecting aligned with your mission? Does it tell a story related to your mission? Because the information you are collecting on your customer and your content should guide and inform your decisions for programming, promotion, and partnerships. All right, Betty, watch that chat because I'm going to have you start in chat or on your notes, on paper, or in your head, who are your data consumers? Who needs, requires, benefits from knowing about your customers and your programs? Maybe it's business partners, regulatory boards, state officials, uh, board of directors, program investors. It's been really exciting to me to watch all the funding that's being offered to uh, CE programs and students to fill these skills gaps or training professionals for the workforce. Well, we do. I am monitoring the Q&A and the chat. Great. And we do have an answer um, to your um, statement right then. We have workforce development grant providers and funders. Yes, absolutely. And they're going to request a lot of information. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. For me, it started with my dean because she reported to central administration who reported to you get the picture. And it came to also involve our division marketing directors, our program developers within the division, have financial directors always just wanting to see the money. And of course, it includes me and you as we generate personal and unit performance goals and more on that in a little bit. So with these folks in mind, they're gonna help us review and analyze and interpret the data, which is your story, and help make some program decisions because we're not selling this ship alone. We have some people with us after all. Are we meeting our mission? Are we on target for goals? Where can we improve our service, our programs, our partnerships? What does this team need? When do they need it? And gosh, I hope it's not in five minutes. How, how do they need it? What presentation format do they need that in? And the good news is that there is plenty of overlap in these data consumers and what they need. Now, I have a word of caution. Beware of data junkies. You all know what I'm talking about. You have someone in your mind right now because not Every piece of data is critical. Now, I'm going to exaggerate big time here, but I don't think collecting and knowing the number of left-handed versus right-handed students is really information we need to be collecting. And if you feel things are kind of getting out of control, some questions that help are, you know, who's going to collect that and how is that going to be collected and how is it going to be used and how is it going to help us meet our goals? So stay on track, collect what is needed, back to that mission statement, 
And by gosh, use what you've collected. Another tip that I have um, is blend human intuition with data. I value my gut instincts and that of my team. Thank you very much. Sometimes we get so immersed in the data that we forget those gut instincts. You are the ones out there talking to your business partners, interacting with your students, and learning what's needed. Trust the instincts. Combine that with the data that you're receiving. And another tip, ask. I wasn't afraid to ask what was needed, but don't go in empty handed, okay? Don't go in with a yellow sheet of paper and a red pen and say, feed me. I don't think any of us would do that, but do your homework. Put yourself in the shoes of your data consumers. Review what you have, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. You can also review past annual reports, re review a presidential vision statement. Um, gather what you do know, and then go in with time well spent to find out maybe what's missing. And share. If you data consumers out there, don't make those five-minute calls if you can avoid it. Um, if and when something new is needed or important, inform the person that's collecting that data and reporting to you right away. All right. Where are we gathering information from? Mainly our data house. And in my case, it was our registration software. So I have a quick poll here, poll number one. I'd love that to be pulled up. What are you currently using as your data house? Are you required to use a campus student information system? Are you, are, do you have a dedicated, dedicated, speaking can be hard, dedicated registration database, or are you manually doing this with Excel or something? <laughs> what system? So I still see responses coming in. Hmm. All right. It looks like we have people that have answered. Can we show the results, please? Our results okay. are um, a campus, yeah, campus CIS system. 25% of our um, responses, 50% a dedicated registration database. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And 25% are using Excel. God bless your souls. Yeah. Oh, man. Let me tell you, I'm glad that, glad that it's trending up that you have a dedicated uh, registration database because what you're doing and what credit side are doing totally, totally different beasts. We can stop sharing that. So what I am going to talk about and what you're going to see, can we get is the poll off of there? There we go. Okay, get your pencils ready again. And as I go through these slides, make some notes about what you know you are already collecting. And these slides that you see are taking from the ACEWARE uh, database. This is the administrative database here. And so here's some stuff we're already gathering. Let's get a pointer here. We know a lot about our students' DNA already. We know some of uh, their habits already. I can tell the shopping habits based on past courses taken. I know how many courses they've taken, and from the courses they've taken, and probably the information I collected from them when they created an account with our, with our company, with our program, what their interests are. I can tell if they're current or a little more past, but this information here is going to help as I do some target marketing. I know where they heard about our program, how they were introduced to your program. I know where they're coming from, county, zip code, city, state. 
I know what type of firm they're related to. If this were personal development program or community development, you may not have a firm that they're associated with, but you know where they're coming from, you know their title of their profession, and so they're probably going to be interested in some administrative type courses. I know if you're required to collect this information, I know their age and I know their gender. If needed, I can even track additional um, demographic information, their ethnicity, family type if needed. And I know some of their credentials. This is important and this came up yesterday in CE 101 too. With the funding that's being provided for courses or with approval to provide courses comes accountability. And people are now, units are now being asked to report on, are they full-time students, part-time students? Did they complete the program? If they completed that program, were they placed in a job as a result? If they were already employed and completed their certificate, did they have a chance for career advancement in that situation? What salaries are they making? What kind of uh, stackable credentials have they earned? This is becoming more the rule than the exception these days. So I know a lot about the student already. I also know a lot about the firms that we're partnering with. I know what they're purchasing. I know how many employees have registered for classes. I know the registration income that has come from this partnership. I know what contract courses I've offered. I know what we've talked about on the phone, in a chamber meeting or something, and what skills they're, they're asking for, what training they're asking for. I know about course information. I know the type and the subject matter. I know where they met and the time of day that they met and the dates that they met, the CEUs and the hours that are generated, whether those courses are filling or not, if we had to open up another section. I know the department, if you're on campus and have business or a department partnerships or business partnerships. So there is a lot that I already do know. So I've got my homework done. I've reviewed my dean's annual reports. I reviewed the president's vision 2025 report. I've reviewed my database to see what we do have and I'm ready now to talk to the dean. So the meeting request that I made came with this purpose and with the homework that I had done. This is what I do know. What I need to meet with you about is what we're missing. I know what your goals for the division are. I know how they fit into the overall university goals. Now I need to meet with you and I need to find out what I'm missing. So if the call comes, I can get that to you quickly. And so I asked if she could review this information or her admin and fill in those gaps so I could respect her time. She doesn't have a lot of it. So not only did she accept this request, she held a meeting room for lunch and invited the unit heads and other data consumers, our marketers, our development team. She invited them to the table. And so by golly, I got the dean and everybody else that might be data consumers of mine together at one time. Yay. And she was endorsing the topic and buying lunch. Yay, yay. <laughs> this was my here's what I do know meeting, what else do you need or we need conversation. And I mentioned earlier that I had a few personal goals as well. And I'm guessing these are goals that you may have too. First of all, campus and community perception. Our provost at that time had a policy that all events that came into campus through departments, any kind of a conference had to be run through our unit. We were the gateway to the university and we had to coordinate those events. Well, that's a blessing and a curse. The blessing is that 
a lot of those legalities and the finances were run well and the events were consistent and you had a team that really, really knew how to do that. The curse of that was departments didn't want to work with us. They had to, and we all know what mandates feel like. And I wanted to fix that. I wanted to build bridges and partnerships for non-credit. And thankfully, this was in line with the Dean's Division credit goals. She was building departmental partnerships and she was building some revenue sharing strategies. And so she endorsed that and gave that her nod of approval. The second thing was team morale. When our unit was mentioned in presentations across campus, it was often with the phrase, ordering tea and cookies. Ouch. Okay, we did that and we do that well, but I was absolutely sure we could be bigger players than that. I bet we can be a part of the grant team that and have ways to disseminate those grant projects and the information and the research from that. We could disseminate that to communities and other universities. I bet that if our non-credit coordinators can have a seat at the table when you and uh, credit representatives go meet with departments on a monthly basis. I bet we can have a seat and identify some areas as we talk with businesses and things where credit modules could be disassembled and uh, recreated into some non-credit components. I'd like a seat at the table. Now this was a great meeting, great conversation, great food. And I'm connecting the data requirements with the division goals and the university mission. And so you see, I have some italicized area that came out of that meeting where I wanted to have more respect on campus in the community. I needed to be able to take some of these figures and collect those and centralize those and report on those so the campus and community could see the value of the non-credit program. And I'm going to leave this slide up just for a second because you might have other things to add to what a development team or your governing body might need to add to your worksheet. So now I've identified my gaps. I needed more departmental information to build those partnerships. I needed more campus um, information. I needed to collect housing and dining uh, revenue, campus room use revenue, printing, parking. I needed to have revenue to share to show our community and our state impact. So I needed those dollars. We had them, but you had to really dig for them. And I needed those centralized to paint the picture in a better format. So you hopefully are writing down some things that you know where some of these gaps are that you might need to collect. Now I've got to get my data house in order. And let's bring up poll number two. We know what you're using. Now I want to know if you're able to repurpose data fields, UDF some things on your own. Uh, or if you have to go out to IT and the system admin, get some support there, maybe pay some money. No, we got to request a change with our vendor and wait our turn and pay some money. Or there's still some of you, bless your hearts, using Excel sheets. So can you do this yourself? Oh, got to request a change. Okay. Don't see any other responses coming in. This is one of those anybody out there moments. All right, let's go ahead and show. What I'm seeing is 100% of you have to request a change and wait your turn. Ooh, I am sorry to hear that. Thank you. Let's stop sharing that poll. I'm sorry to hear that. That that makes it a little harder, but I had my own uh, I had my own roadblocks to to deal with. First of all, the registration system that I was using was full. I didn't have any more space to collect this data. So that was a roadblock. I needed to be able to code with intention here. I knew I didn't have available and I didn't have any more additional data fields. And I needed help in designing that output. Ugh. So I reached out to IT and they were 
overjoyed to help and they you know put ce on the front burner all the time we are their top priority yeah no you know that's not true we were never on the front burner we would get pushed back all the time but this was something that i needed to have done and so i reached out to them and made an offer i was in a position where i could say I need your help. You know our database that we're using. You've been assigned to kind of support that. It's full. I need more data entry points and I need reports. And so I said, I will put a developer, but I want to choose who it is because I know who's service oriented and I know who speaks my language and I will pay a portion of his salary. I want Greg, but I want Greg to come to our office so he can completely focus on us that percentage of time he can focus on us and our projects and bingo at that time that worked it was a win win situation. And so we reviewed I brought in like a senior coordinator and a senior registrar because the users need to be the ones with their hands on and have these conversations and we talked to Greg about what we currently had, how we collected it, what else we were needing. And like I mentioned before, thankfully, there was a lot of information we already had. So we were dealing with a small amount. So we were making slight adjustments. He helped us in the interim. I can't do this overnight. I'm not magic. But in the interim, here's where you're going to put that data. OK, our data was coming from student reporting, registration, team entry, course setup, and now this additional information with the departments, additional information we were gathering on interest and community and financial information. Your team might be, and you can share in chat, but you might be importing business needs from planning meetings or surveys or chamber gatherings, your notes or that were here that you're getting down into the database. There's you probably have lots of ways that you're collecting that information. So drop those ideas into chat. If Betty sees something fantastic, she'll shout it out to us. So a word of caution, this is probably nothing new to you, but be gentle with your customers, whether they're online or on the phone with you, you don't wanna be intrusive. I mean, if I have to give my full bio and my child's blood sample to register for a non-credit course, I'm probably gonna get a little leery, but, Customers are really, really supportive if you tell why. We're collecting this information to make, to grow our programs, to grow programs for you, to grow programs for the community. They're, they're pretty um, open to that. And as long as you're keeping that to a manageable size and you know not 50 data elements, but two or three, they're probably. So tell them why. And now there's with my team. I've got to share this information with my team. If you attended Dr. Perez's session this week, he talked about the fact that change is stressful and that progress is impossible without change and the need to cultivate a climate of change. I completely agree with him. In our instance, we took a day out of the office got to get away from the phone and the day-to-day -day everything and we talked about the call and the visit with leadership and the goal of changing perceptions of our unit on campus and in the community about being more involved in the big picture and developing new initiatives this was no surprise to the team because we'd worked together a long time, whether I was a, a fellow coordinator, a program administrator, and now as director, I knew how they felt already. This was no surprise and they're very excited about it. And then I say, but to accomplish this, we've got to make some changes. Now, then you get a little bit of pushback, you know, some are fine and they embrace change and others that makes them really, really nervous. Well, what's wrong with the way we're doing things now? Are you telling me I'm not doing my job well? And this, I said, no, no. Change can make us bitter or change can make us better. Let's let change make us better. Let's pull together. And so we spent a day talking about some of the new responsibilities that we would have on campus and in the community and how we need to be all in. Yes, 
some needed some additional encouragement and nudging, but most everyone was hands in. So we talked through every step of the process. We took our standard operating procedures and we updated them. We talked through department meetings, what to listen for, what to document, uh, where to involve leadership immediately, those just in time, let's do it now type projects. We walked through the new data collection and reporting procedures because consistency is key. Good data in, golden data out. And our new developer that was part of our team now, he was there too. So he could listen to the actual users of the system and ask his questions and, and he could hear where the problems were, he could correct those in his project. But bottom line, we were hands in and hands on. Whew. The plan was made, the plan was implemented, it sounds like it took forever. It didn't because CE can't take forever. We are nimble, we're responsive, and we're quick, and we seize those opportunities. So now it's time to present the data and for review, to share our story, to see the whole picture. I loved this grammarist definition of connecting the dots putting facts and ideas together to see the whole picture and understand something globally. We are gathering data in order to come to a conclusion. We're trying to keep our strategic compass on target. Let's do a quick poll here. I think I'm gonna know the results from the last poll number three in report generation, your data extraction. Can you modify and design reports independently? Absolutely, we're in full control. No, it takes time and money. Still manipulating. Crickets. Oh, good. I see some are in full control. That's awesome. That's amazing. It is. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, so we're about 50-50 on those that responded anyway. Thank that's you, what, Betty. That's what it looks like. Thank, Thank you. you, Betty. Appreciate that. Let's close this up here. So we're going to take a walk now through some actual reports. This is the fun part where you get to tell your story, okay? These, I want to stress that this is, a lot of these are from our demo data, from Aceware's demo data. And so there's going to be some holes. It's not going to be perfect. It's to give you a proof of concept. But here is a promotional return on investment report. Wow. I heard this question come up in CE 101 yesterday. And the question was, are print pieces, such as catalogs, still viable in today's world? And the comment and the answer was, take a look at your data points. Well, this is the data that would tell you that. This is what would tell you, are you getting registrations and what percent of the total registrations are you getting from those print catalogs? If it's performing well and giving you a good return on your investment, by all means, you need to keep that. But this report is there to tell you what marketing campaigns you did that got the best return on investment and how can you replicate that success? Uh, what are we using and what channels are missing? If I just look at this demo data, I'd be wondering about Google ads and email campaigns according to interest codes in my system, uh, just plain email campaigns, maybe some webinars to, to promote your program. Social media, I see some things that are missing here that me, we might want to try, and a lot of those don't have a lot of funds involved either. So they would be ideas to try. The other thing to think about when you look at this, folks, this is a snapshot in time. You're probably going to want to look at this over more than one year. Yeah, you're not going to want to change everything from, from one year. You might want to make some adjustments, but comparing data over time is important as well. All right, let's look at student demographics. In this report, I'm finding out where my students are coming from. This one in particular is by city. How many registrations, how many actual people and how many registrations did we get from those cities? Uh, some 
demographics uh, here and also, you know, your average course fees. But I might want to look at this. You might want to look at it by zip code. The zip code was a piece of information I was collecting in the database, so I should be able to get it out. Counties represented. Where are they coming from? Who's not represented? Why aren't they there? Do we need to take go meet with some of the city representatives there? Is there competition that they're running there? Or maybe we want to move to an online format and see if we can draw people outside, you know, into the program. Maybe we can take some programs to them. So these are things you might talk about here. I might want to run this report by age if I'm collecting that. And if I was in Manhattan, Kansas, where I'm located, the Little Apple, I might think why in a community like ours that has so many retirement centers and villages, do we not have anybody in this range 50 plus? So these are things, and, and you're gonna have ideas. There's some seasoned um, CE folks here. You can just throw out your comments there. But these are things you're looking at to connect those dots and grow more programs and grow more income. Uh, let's take a look at content analysis. These are the subject codes that, that I've offered. So in your mind's eye, take a look and add some of your subject codes here. What's bringing in, you know, where are the majority of the classes coming from? Did they go or not? Did we have to cancel them? How many registrations did we receive? And if you're using a financial tracker as well, you can even tell, you know, your, your income from that. Again, I might want to run this report by instructors. We have instructors that are drawing people in. Should we uh, use, assign that instructor more? Should we pay more? Who knows? Day of the week um, compared to last year again. I've got this in my notes again. This is a snapshot in time. Compare over years. What's trending? What's declining? What do we need to do to um, release together what's growing well how can we replicate that i might want to analyze by coordinator term there's just remember that these are snapshots and you need to look at some data over time to make really good decisions department analysis this was important to me uh, that the dean needed to know what departments were offering what was growing what was declining and i didn't have the information she needed at that time but again, growth over time. Where can I maybe get some departments to collaborate and build some other programs? Um, where's the growth by term? This one was done by, it looks like a whole fiscal year, but maybe I want to go between dates. So lots of ways to slice and dice the data in a way that you need. Course performance, what are my top performing courses? How can I replicate those courses? Should we be offering more of them? Could I bring in courses that are similar but I have a lower performance and bundle them with my high performing courses and offer a package deal? Different ways to market. Who's my top students? Either by courses taken or by income. What can I do with this? If I were doing this, I would take these top students and I would create a VIP list and invite them to participate in a focus group. What's going well? What do you like? What could we do, be doing better? Maybe these students can give me some testimonials. Maybe they'd be willing to do a video clip. Maybe I want to send Ms. Leslie here, uh, send Leslie a coupon. Thank you for taking so many courses take one on us. I might want to send her two, take one on us and bring a friend and let Leslie or these top performing students become advocates for me and help promote our programs. If you have other ideas, drop them in chat. This is a time to be sharing. I mentioned that I would share some actual reports. The report you're seeing now is an actual report from a partner we have in New York State. Because they participate in federal financial assistance program, they each term they have to submit and report different pieces of data. And over the year, they're reporting on student demographics and graduation right, rights, rates, <laughs> part-time and full-time status. So you can see some of the financial aid here. You can see they need to know pass fail if they're full-time or part-time students. This is actual data that they use to import into the integrated post-secondary education data system, IPEDS for short. 
Here's another actual statistical report that's generated by a technical school we partner with in South Carolina, used with permission, of course, not shown on this report, but data they also request and need to report on is certificate program completion, career advancement, job placement, et cetera. In this particular report, they're reporting on grade and age and some other coding that they have done internally. Now, you all have different reports and they all tell your stories to inform your programming. We all have a variety of missions we're trying to meet, but we all are serving students and helping them grow. So you'll have your own specific data points that you're wanting to observe, those key performance indicators that you're monitoring. The rest of my story, it had, it had a pretty happy ending. The team did get some recognition and received a President's Award of Excellence. And these comments that they made, these big picture direction, efficiency, and all these things, these were the results of intention. There was intentional planning, intentional collection, intentional reporting. We were changing for a purpose that was related to the overall mission. Okay, and then we sailed happily ever into the sunset, yes? Yeah, no, no, you all know better than that. Change is going to happen. Like Dr. Perez said, it is here to stay. You're gonna have new administration, you're gonna have new initiatives, you're gonna have new business growth opportunities, new businesses coming to your area to talk with them about new programming needs they have. You're gonna also, I'm sorry, on occasion, have a few storms to weather, but when new information is needed, you're going to be ready to begin again without so much pain and effort because you've got a process in place and there is smoother sailing altogether when you have a data navigation in place, when everyone's on the same data navigation path and the destination, your mission, is the focus. So start with that clear mission-driven purpose, capture what's needed, use what you've captured, have clear communication with your team, with your data consumers, with your business departments, departments and make that, um, standard operating procedure, consistency is key, a consistent collection strategy. Report, review, evolve, refine, make those decisions and then repeat the process. And before I get the chance for you to ask me questions, I told you I was gonna see what's on your application, what's on your plan. So please share something that's on your to-do list. Mine was research the Dean's reports, her annual reports, capture and go take a look and take an inventory of what I currently had. Look at the president's report. Betty, are we getting anybody or are they all like wearing out at the end of the week here? Something that's on your to-do list. I am not seeing anything at the moment, but I will tell you that I think a lot of people on our sessions have been absorbing uh, information. <laughs> well, and, by this time of the week, they're on, on information overload. Yeah, well, I mean, we've got we've got one more SETI session, but yep. we've not had anybody say anything negative, and we do look forward to our surveys at the end, but... I believe that all of our speakers have given um, different viewpoints to look at how do you look at yourself as a uh, professional and how can you deal with your, uh, as an employee, and if you are a supervisor, how you look at your employees and how you supervise them, and how, as a human being, how can you keep that work-life balance, and how can we make sure that we're treating each other fairly, and I think a lot of people have been taking that to heart. Good, good. So, if you don't have anything on your to-do list, are you anticipating any roadblocks? You don't have anything on your to-do list you might not have anything on your roadblocks mine were my database is full 
and I need help in import, inputting data, and out exporting data. I had to find a way around that little that little roadblock. But you'll think of you may. I think can of I own. can tell you I can tell you mine. All right. I what need, was your? I, I need more hours in the day because the <laughs> the older I get, the busier I become, and I don't know how that happened. I don't know either. I don't know either. So I'm, if you're not saying anything, if, if you think of something, let us know. But what questions do you have for me at this point? Let me look here. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm looking here. And lo and behold, I have a few questions here that I've got. Um, well, Sharon, what tips would you have for those of us that don't have an open door or supportive administration? Where, where do we go? Yeah, I was very thankful and lucky to have a dean with an open door policy. Some don't. I guess my strategy would have been brownie equity. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If I didn't have that support, I would have probably gone and talked with others who reported to her. Um, what questions, what do you have? What questions have you got that you couldn't answer? And I would have probably collaborated with the leadership team that we were on to find out even more information. And I would keep gently knocking. If that request was denied, I may have talked with the leadership team to see the same type of meeting, but without her and presented that. And I think over time, folks, if you're doing something that's helping that person, I think that I think that over time that they would respond. It, it's unfortunate and I hope it's not very common in continuing ed whose whole goal is to help people grow and things I, i'm guessing it would be the exception rather than the rule that people don't have open door but that that's where i'd start i'd start with the leadership team and see how together we could pull in and help i'll, I'll add my two cents there sharon perfect um uh when in doubt if you know you're doing the right thing do it and get your hand slapped later <laughs> yes and if there's some experienced C folk out there, you might jot a note in too. Um, we're here to mentor and help those, and then learn from then learn from those that are new to CE too. So, good Absol question. Absolutely, it was a wonderful question. And sometimes, as human beings, we do have to go with our gut and try to take care of the customer first. Yep. Uh, we do have another one. Um, what are your tips to try to create a data-driven team? Um, because I know in CE, budgets are sometimes none and people are few. So how, how do you create a data-driven team? In the situation that I was in, they need to see the importance, I think, to, to what they're doing, because the people that are in CE are very caring and nurturing people and truly, truly care about the success of everyone. And just like saying, be careful how much you request of your customers, I think it's because, you know, and tell them why you're collecting that, I think your team needs to know that too. Um, it, it's always was frustrating if you don't have all the information you need, I'm just doing this just because I'm told to do it, it is never a great feeling. It's, it's better if you're involved and you know why you're doing it. I'm helping people in this way. This is going to make our unit shine. This is going to make me shine as a professional. And I'm helping others at the same time have them as a part of the process and identify the why of it. Uh, don't just give out a charge. Come in and say, here's where we're going. Here's why we're going there. Here's what we need to get there. And here's how I need your help. Here's how we need your help to get that done. Well, and I can also say um, from personal experience, I mean, I've been working, um, you know, was at a university from 1997, you know, before um, starting ProTrain. I've seen, you know, when it was WIA and now it's WIOA and they kept encouraging you that you had to collect the data, you know, did the student pass the class, did they pass the exam, you know, if so, where are they working and how much are they making and that's been going on for years and years and years, but nobody's been um, held accountable. Well, those, those days are gone. Um, if you can't produce that data, 
uh, we as schools will be kicked out of the eligible training provider list right. in your service area. Right. And so we have to, data, like you said, data is king. We have to explain to our students, I have to have this in order to be able to, you know, in a polite way, in order to be able to do my job. This is what I have to do. So if you want to take this class, I have to have this information. Right. Help me help you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Help me uh, help you. We, we do have another one, and, and, and I strongly understand this one, because CE departments sometimes are one people or two people deep. I don't have a programmer. And yes. there's, there's no central IT. Um, yes. how, how, how do I get how, how do I get things changed? Any any ideas? If I didn't, if if I hadn't had somebody bite on that at that time, um, having somebody um, being able to put somebody on my budget to help, um, I would have maybe even gone to the computer science program. There may be a student that has a project that they need. This might be a project that they can use. Um, I might have looked around my community, you know, use my chamber connections and stuff to see if I can't find somebody to bring in and help me get where I need to go. Um, so if you're in a, in, you know, a city or you play, and all of us are with institution, I would look to programs and see if we could not collaborate and to get the help I needed in an economic way. Other yeah, ideas? We, 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 have, we have another um, question here that's very related to what you just said. Um, we've not been allowed to rehire staffing yeah. losses that we incurred during the pandemic. So we're working basically on a skeleton crew yep. with limited staffing. Do you have suggestions with what data points to prioritize? Uh, and, and, and I'm going to say, first and foremost, I'm not going to say the person's name, um, I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I, I, I really do. And it, it's, it's really hard to run a department, keep your job, and help your employees keep their job when you feel like you got one arm tied behind your back. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not trying to be a commercial, but that is where third-party providers like ProTrain come into play that can help be an extension arm of your department. But... Um, uh, and and I, I said that from the heart because I feel where you're coming from. But Sharon, what would you like to add, yeah. please? One of the things, and, and I said five program coordinators. We really had four for a very long time. So part of my data collection, I started tracking those in-kind requests I was getting from the president's office. We're bringing this in, and we're not we're not paying you. And so one of the things I did was collect um, these in-kind services we were doing and the monetary value for that and I got another coordinator out of it. So I would start probably with, you know, that was on a personal side. I need more staffing. My team is running ragged. I see them logging in at night and weekends. I see their cars in the parking lot along with mine on the weekend. So I get that. And I fought for that position with data. What are we doing in kind for the institution? And I need some real, I, we need some, I, if you want me to do that anymore, then I need a coordinator that's just assigned to hosting presidential, presidential events and, and won it that way. Um, I'd start probably with my dean too. And I had an open door, you know, what is the most important information we have that's kind of a wishy-washy answer when you guys are all just dying out there um other comments questions from the group suggestions but data can get you <laughs> warm bodies too on occasion i feel your pain I feel your no, pain i i know i know exactly what you're talking about yeah. and i mean you you just you have to be real you have to and in fact i think it starts with a relationship um with one with their supervisor um you know if you're the director of continuing ed the manager of continuing ed whatever your title is we all have a supervisor and developing that relationship with them where they know that you're working as hard as you can 
and you might have weekly or every two weeks meetings with them, but you're giving them a real time update on what's going on and mm -hmm. being real. And it's like, when you need help, and if you've established that relationship, you need to look them in the eye and say, I need help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I could tell, like I said, um, it, we had it, I had an open door policy and coordinators, you know, had, you know, once a month to come in and talk and I'm popping into the out of their office at the time too. But I could tell when people had logged in and by golly, I'd bring them in. Look, I saw you here on the weekend. I saw you here in the evenings. You've got kids at home. We have to figure this out. Um, and sometimes I lended a hand or sometimes we, you know, get a student to help out. Um, we, we made partnerships with the hospitality department. So because their students needed some experience, I was able to draw in some student assistance from hospitality for projects to help too without paying a salary. Um, they helped with some of the coordination and data entry and some of the things that coordinator needed, needed help with. So the, that was another way we, we did that, drew in student projects, of course, to get kind of free help and, and also contribute to their career choice and their career development, too. Good question. I, I, I think this, is, this, is, this has been great conversation. Um, employment data from certifications earned. We have time for one more uh, question because we are uh, running a little bit over. Our next session starts at 4.30. I hope many of you or all of you will be able to attend. Um, final, final uh, can you give me some tips on how I can keep my employees to keep our data clean and relevant? And, and, and I can attest, you know, you, you get a database, whether it's Salesforce or you're using SecureSync or whatever you're using in the cloud, and you, you know it's, it's there and you know how to use it, but how do, how do you keep it clean where different employees, you know, over turnover, they go in and use it to their own discretion? So what kind of policies and procedures would you recommend to help keep data clean? Well, we had, uh, you know, standard operating, well, we had standard operating procedures for data entry, and I could certainly tell who who was doing well and who wasn't. But your software should also come with some data cleanup tools. Some of the, the piss problems I had, you know, with duplicates, Joseph versus Joe and K-State versus KSU versus Kansas State University and all of that. And there should be some tools to clean that up. But you also need to do it uh, consistently. We, on a quarterly basis, took a look at some of the data and, and kept the cleanup in place. So it was, you know, just like your checkup with the doctor, you go in and they prescribe things. You've got to, you've got to add that to your to your list, you've got to kind of do it, take the meds and, and do, do whatever it takes to stay healthy, but also that checkup. But yeah, um, we had some that kind of went out, kind of go rogue, but I could tell who it was. And, and I, you know, I just called them on it. This is, this is where it is. And here's what I'm seeing. And I need you to clean that up. Um, and again, here's why. This is why this is important. This is what's missing. You know, you saw in one of those reports, there was no data collected. Well, that that's some people on the phone that forgot or, you know, maybe they had a good reason. You know, they were in a hurry. They didn't want to give me that information or whatever, but make make a note. So standard operating procedures, accountability, um, that, that's, that's my recommendation. I could not agree with you more. Um, I'm going to tell you, this has been a, a wonderful session, Sharon. I appreciate your time, your dedication. I appreciate every single attendee, whether you're here live or if you're going to listen to it later, um, because this presentation will be provided um, uh, to you via a link to be able to listen to it again if you want to share it with your colleagues, as well as the PowerPoint and a PDF I do want to thank our sponsors again, because without them, we would not be able to offer this um, uh, conference to you at no charge. Uh, Core Education, ProTrain, F.A. Davis, Comtia, A-Square Systems, HRCP, Zenegrade, AMCA, and CIW. I will tell you, I am I'm so happy at all the people that have shown up to the sessions. It's been wonderful in the exchange of ideas. 
Um, I will highly encourage you again, if you haven't, join the SETI alumni group. It's your LinkedIn group for you all to exchange information. There's no advertising whatsoever. It's there for you to use it as you see fit. And I hope I see many of you again, or all of you, at our 4.30 Eastern Standard Time session for Workforce Grants Best Practices. It's a discussion panel. So Sharon, um, have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And I look to see uh, many of you or all of you on the next session. And thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.